Welcome to an episode of my tutorials about GNU slash Linux and Ethernet. Today I want to show you how you can write a simple TCP socket client in C. So let's go. First I will create a folder I will call socket and in this I will store all the very all my examples for TCP and UDP server and clients. Then I will um, open up a second window here in which I will view some man pages. And then here I will create a new C source file I will call client.c. First I will include some standard headers such as standard IO, um, standard lib, string.h, unistd.h and function control. And then le let me create an empty main function here. Okay. So we want to create a socket server so it, or client, so it makes sense to take a look at the man page for a socket. And I'm using man page zero, which is normally the C library stuff. Yeah, so let's see what we have in here. So in here we have the function socket, which is need to create a socket or an endpoint for communication. And this function needs the sys slash socket.h header. So let's add this header as well sys slash socket dot h. Okay. So this function basically has an integer return value and in case a uh, socket could be created successfully, it will return a file descriptor to the socket. So here I will create a variable I will call socfd, which will contain this file descriptor. And then I will call socket and then we have to talk about the arguments. So the first argument here, domain, is the type of connection or the protocol family which should be used. So down here you can see various. So AF Unix is for example used for a local communication on your specific PC. AF INET would be used for IP version 4 internet protocol transfers and that's the one we'll go with. But for example, if you want to use IP version 6, you, we could use the ifinet6 domain here. Okay, so let's use afinet here. Then the second argument, the type here, specifies the type of communication we want to use. And we want to use a TCP communication. So for TCP, we have to use SOC stream here. For UDP, we would use SOC dgram. So yeah, let me add soc stream here. And the last argument could be used to specify the protocol even further, but here I will just pass a zero because I don't need to specify it any further. Okay, so now if the return value is smaller than zero, an error occurred during the creation of the socket and I will print out the error and I will return with the error code from my application. But in case this returns zero or a value bigger than zero, we have a valid file descriptor over which we can access our socket. And of course, at the end of the program, we have to close the file descriptor here. Okay, then the next thing we need to do is we need to connect to a server. Therefore, let's take a look at the main page for connect. The header is the same, which is cool. Um, here the connect function needs the following arguments. The first argument is our socket descriptor or which we want to um, yeah, connect ourselves or our program to the server. The next argument is an address structure which contains in our case the IP address and the port to which we want to connect. But this struct socket address is protocol independent and here, therefore, we are passing uh, address len or the length of uh, the structure we are passing to so it knows which structures it can use. Okay, but now maybe first let's take a look at the main page for SOC address. Because here we can see how this structure looks like. So basically first we have a variable specifying the um, address family and then we have a data array basically. 
And for example, socket address in would be the structure we would have to use for our IP version 4 um, connection. And here we have the family, we have the port address and we have the IP address stored in one um, struct. Okay, so here I will create an object from the type struct soc address in and I will call it address. Then down here first I will initialize it with all zeros. Okay, and then I can fill the fields. So the first field is in family, which I will set to AFINet. Then sin port, I can set to the port address of the server I want to connect to. And here I will use the port address 12345. And this htons function converts the byte ordering from my system byte ordering to the byte ordering which is required by the networking protocol. So maybe this is not, in my case, I won't have to use it, but it's safer to use it here. Okay, and then I have to store the IP address in the sin IP struct. But the problem is, I have it available as a string and I need to convert it into a type struct in address here. And maybe yeah, here it's also worth to mention if we would be using IP version 6, we would need a struct from the type soc address in 6 here. Okay, but now let's see how we can do this conversion. This should be done with the function enet aton. So, let's see, enet aton, where we have it. Here it is. So basically we are passing a string and we are passing a pointer to the in address where the address should be stored. So let's use this here. And here I will just connect to my local host, which is this, or which is always this address here. And I want to store the address in the corresponding field of my address struct. Okay. And one important thing, I need to include these two headers to be able to use um, the functions. So I will need um, net enet slash in dot h and I will need rpay enet dot h. Okay. And now we can go back to our connect function and I will declare a status variable up here. So status equals connect. First argument is the, the socket descriptor over which we want to do the connection. Then I have to typecast my address here from soc address into soc address. And I have to pass the pointer here. And the last argument is the size of our address struct, which we can get with size of address. Okay, so in case the connection was successful, this should return a zero, and in, in else it will return a negative error code. So here I will just print out the error message, close the socket descriptor and return the error code. But in case this returns zero, we are now connected to a server and we can now exchange data. So for exchanging data, we can use read and write as for a normal file descriptor in Linux, but we can also use the send function and the receive function. So maybe let's start by sending a string. Therefore, I need to declare a string here. And I will initialize this string with sprintf. So in text, I want to store hello from the client. Okay, and then I will use send. The first argument here is the socket descriptor over which I want to send. The next argument is a pointer to the data I want to send. And then we have to specify the number of bytes we want to send. And the last argument here are flags. So for example, as flags, we could use something as message don't wait if we don't want to 
wait for the command. So on the receive set, this makes more sense. So by default, if you're calling receive, receive will wait until you um, you received something. But if you don't want to wait, you can use this message don't wait flag, for example. And for the rest of the flags, you can read over it if you want to know how to use them. But in our case, I will set the flags to zero. And then I will use receive to receive data from the server. Once again, I have to specify my um, socket descriptor over which I want to receive things. Then I have to apply a pointer in which the received data can be stored. And I have to give it the size of my data buffer and then again the flags. And in case status is bigger than zero, we um, received something and I can print out the received string here. Okay, and at the end we're closing the connection and that should be basically it. Cool. So let me try to compile my program and then we will see how much mistakes I've made. So I will compile it to an L file I will call tc for tcp client. Okay, here I have a typo. This should be of course socfd, close socfd. Okay, now it worked. And now we can test the program. And as a server, I will use netcat. So I can start a TCP server on netcat by starting netcat with the minus L for listen option. And with minus P, I can specify a port. So in this case, the port is 12345. Now the server has started. And I can run my application. So the server received hello from the client. And here I can type in something and when I press um, enter, it will send the string back to the client and the client received hello back from the server. So cool. Our first simple TCP socket client worked. Cool. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.